What's up fam, it's Creative Sav here and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this in Blender. So if you have been on my channel for any length of time, you will know that I post some of my 3D product animation works here and sometimes i get some requests to make a tutorial of how i did this or that so this is like my answer to those requests so right now i'm making a full series covering my whole workflow for 3d product animation so who is this tutorial for i would say it's for the beginner intermediate guy you know you have gone through the basics of blender you know how to use the basic tools you have probably gone through the beginner series for Blender by Blender Guru. I think I'll link that in the description so you can just check it out and go through the whole thing if you have not before. In the video we are trying to recreate, we have three shots there. So we'll start from the simplest one and work our way up to the most complex one. If you look in the description, you'll see a link to a zip file. That's your starter file. So I have a folder containing all the starter files you need to start up this project. I want you guys to follow me step by step as I do this thing. So download the starter folder and you'll see the starter files in them. You have your blend file, your two texture files, and your HDI for lighting. So let's start, open the blend file and you will have this. This is where it starts with. You have two Nivea bottles. So on my screen, you're going to notice on the left corner that there is an image of my mouse. So you can see whatever I click and whatever I type. So the first thing I want you to do now is to arrange your workspace. When I'm working with 3D product animation, I like my workspace looking a specific type of way to help me work effectively. So just hover your mouse around here till you see the arrows, right click and click on vertical split. Then click somewhere around here and move this one higher. Now I want this to be our camera view, right? So let's add a camera just so you see what I'm talking about. Hit shift A to add a camera, camera. Now we have our camera down here. And if we see here, our camera is selected. If this camera icon is selected, that means the camera is the active camera. That's what we want, this camera to be active for this shot. So what we will do now is to try to frame the shot. This is how I like framing my shot. Using your middle mouse button to just go around until you see the shot that makes sense to you like you have the shot in your mind so just move it around so i want the camera to be looking at the product directly but tilted upwards a bit so the product looks more grand it's like a cinematic choice to make the product look grander than it actually is so i'll just put it somewhere here yeah now to snap this view to our camera view to make this view to become our camera view you hit ctrl alt zero now let's scroll out. You see that we are now in our camera view. Our camera has assumed this view. Now we can move our camera by hitting G and just moving our mouse around. You can see we are moving our camera. So let's just place it somewhere in the middle. G, Y would move our camera in the Y axis. That's backwards and forwards. G, Y, backwards and forward. G, X would be left and right. So, zero to enter the camera view, GY to move backwards a bit. If you look at this shot, you can see that we have our product on this side, on the left side. So let's frame it like that. GX, move it to the left and bring it back a bit. Just use your G shortcut to just arrange it and frame it here, yeah, something like this, GY. Okay, perfect, we have our shot. Now we need to do a little bit of camera settings. When you are shooting products for photography or animation, personally, I like using long lenses. So long focal lens, like 70, 85 millimeter, 100 and above. It has this look, this nice sweet product look. So that's what we'll be doing here. Make sure your camera is selected. Look at the camera is selected. Then go to your camera properties here, this camera icon. Now change the focal length from 50, 50 is nice, but change it to 85 so it's longer and gets closer to the product. Something else I would like you to do is to go to the viewport display and under passport to this setting here, make sure it's checked, increase the opacity to 1. 
maybe you knew this and maybe you didn't but this makes the area around the camera to be blacked out it's very distracting where you can see this the stuff around the camera so just make it one yeah so it's blacked out now the last thing i'd like to do is hit composition guides and thirds so we can see the rule of thirds so we can frame properly so now our framing has changed let's just adjust that one more time g y to move the camera backwards then hit g and play with it just play around till you get the framing we are looking for something like this so this is what our camera is seeing now the reason why we created this space is so we can make this our permanent camera view while we work in this area so to do that just hit zero click here and hit zero on your numpad okay wonderful now i want to make it a little bit neater so hit t to take out this part and disable this now we can see that this is just our camera view so when we change things here we'll see how it's affected on the camera view what we want to do next is to texture our object we are trying to make it to look as realistic as possible now we are making this tutorial in ev ev is blender's real-time render engine it just makes things really fast so i'm making this tutorial in ev because most systems will be able to run this and it will be pretty fast to export this animation very fast so make sure you are in ev if you click on the render properties make sure your render engine is set to ev and not cycles or workbench okay now we want to texture remember in the starter pack our starter files we have two textures here this is what we are going to use to texture this whole thing okay so click on the shading tab over here now we have gone into our shader editor we can edit the texture here and play with it so the first thing we are going to do for this big bottle is to create a new material click new then it has created a new material now this is just a principal bsdf material just a basic physical looking material we can change the color here and to change so it's just something basic now what we want to do is to add this specific texture that i created in photoshop i just played with it and tried to imitate like the actual bottle so you can just drag and drop here very easily now connect the color of the texture to the base color here and boom you would have it perfectly on the bottle now note i already unwrapped this bottle so that's why it's just perfectly on it like this so we'll have to unwrap the second one together so i can show you the process of adding designs on products it took me so long to find a tutorial on how to do this basic stuff when i started this so annoying before we do that on this big bottle click on the big bottle press tab to go into edit mode and we want to select this top since the top of the bottle is blue is a different color a deep blue so we want to select this whole top a quick way to do that is hitting l if we hit l on the sections we want to select just keep hitting l on the areas you want to select we don't want that part ctrl z these are just the parts we want to be blue now this is another important thing to learn how to make different parts of your model to be different textures different materials so to do that since we have selected this area just add a material here click this plus icon now create a new material change the color to something like something blue and now i don't think we can see it yet you can't see it yet now click on assign when we click on assign we'll be able to see it's wonderful now when we change this color it will change here see it's really easy now let's try to make the color the same with this Nivea color we want to be on brand so our clients won't send us a million reviews so just adjust the color until it looks right probably make it darker this is to adjust the brightness of the color this is to adjust the specific color to pick your color so i think we have something pretty similar yeah this is good now let's move to the second bottle really quick let's create a new material actually if you label your material it makes things really easy you can change this material auto to small bottle material so you can always know where your material is because if you are working on a big project you would see a long list of material 007 material 063 
it's confusing so try to label your material i know it's stressful so let's drop in our second nivea design drop it connect color to base color and boom you can see we have our design but it's not placed correctly we want it to be placed correctly how do we do that hit one to go into front orthographic view now this is the front but this is not what should be in front to fix that we go to edit mode by hitting tab select all by hitting a u then smart uv project i realized this was the best one to get the shape unwrapped okay now you can see here this is make sure this is your uv editor make sure you are in your uv editor you can see here that we have the texture here and this is basically these are basically the shapes of the sides of the bottle this is one side this is on that side this is the left and right side and these are part of the top so the part we're interested in now is this front side so select all hitting a arrow to rotate 180 to rotate it 180 degrees now drag it until you have lined it up perfectly wonderful this is pretty much what we want then scale it on the y-axis x s y till the nivea circle looks like a circle okay great we bring it down g y till it's lined up perfectly wonderful so the way i designed this texture in photoshop is so it just lines up perfectly with the model you don't have to worry so much great we have now textured our model so wonderful the next thing i want us to do is to create different collections for our different shots so this is how i like to work we have three shots in this video so we are going to create three different collections where we'll put our different shots so we can render from the collections okay so this is one collection let's rename it to shot one hit f2 to rename shot one um i think let's let's just duplicate this collection right click duplicate collection and duplicate it again now let's rename it to shot two and shot three now we'll have our product and a camera in the three different collections now disable the remaining two so we can work with the first shot and also make sure this is the camera that is active don't forget this really messes you up when you are working on a large project and you just try to move a camera and you don't know the camera that is active so you are moving some other camera it just messes things up so make sure this camera is the active one oh now make sure your camera view is in the rendered view rendered view yeah so you can see our work rendered now as you can see from the shot we need to add our backdrop and we need to add our boxes since it's a very simple backdrop, just a flat plane, we can just hit Shift A, Mesh, and add a plane. Scale it by 10, S10, that's what I like to do really quickly. Then rotate it in the X axis, RX90. Wonderful. It's intersecting, we don't want that. Yeah, you can click on this Move tool. I like clicking on the Move tool because it helps me move fast when my mouse is already there. You can use G gx or gy to move in what direction you want but you can also drag it here when you have your move tool selected so i think this is a good distance what we need to do now is add our boxes but before we add our boxes this is looking very weird it's looking very flat if you have noticed because we have not set up any lights so i don't want this to look like this so let's set up our hdri light first so we can look at something beautiful while working so click on the word properties here and on that color, change it from RGB to environment texture to look all weird and purple, but don't worry. Just hit open and go find the folder, your starter files. Now you would see Studio HDRI. I got it from hdrihaven.com. If you want to find free HDRI images, they have a lot of them, high quality ones. So double click on this and you have your lighting. So this is too bright, obviously. This is just too bright. So let's reduce the strength 0 0.04, no 0 0.4. Yeah, I realized 0 0.4 was nice. So it looks a lot better now. Another thing we can do is to, to be able to mess with this HDRI, we have to add a vector map. So to do that is really easy. Click on shading, then come here and change it from object to world. 
now this is showing the world shading and in the world shading you have your hdr right here now click on ctrl t and this should pop up if it doesn't pop up that means you don't have node wrangler enabled to make it enabled is really easy click on edit then preferences then under add-ons search for a wrangler and make sure this is checked you can save your preferences here wonderful now when you click ctrl t here this should pop up so let's go back to our layout now what that helps you to do is under vector mapping we can mess with the z rotation not z location or z scale because that's just going to give you a weird result z rotation if we mess with this z rotation we can change the lighting as you can see we are basically changing the direction of the light so let's find something that looks cool um i think let's just move it around to see something that actually looks cool to start with i think this is cool yeah, i think this is the lighting we used in the video wonderful so i think 87.4 should be nice you can just type that in or whatever lighting you'd like to use so great we have this looking pretty nice let's add our boxes very easy to add just hit shift a mesh cube now i think these cubes are in perfect size so i don't need to adjust the width but we need to adjust the length so hit s z to scale it on the z axis so scale it a bit and just drag it down drag it down until it's just touching this you can hit one to go to your front photographic view and make sure it's just barely touching it yeah now want to duplicate this guy shift d to duplicate hit x to duplicate it on the x axis so it's going to just move here now what i did was just keep a little space between this now let's shift this little bottle so it's somewhere in the middle hit 7 for top view make sure it's right in the middle yeah i think it's good so great okay i think we should adjust our camera view just a little bit you know like this we can see the top of the boxes so hit zero to go into the camera view then use our middle mouse to drag it down a bit yeah something like this then control alt zero to change the view okay now let's work on our boxes a little bit let's get it to look better because there is no object in real life that actually has a sharp edge and in 3d everything just comes out sharp every cube comes out really sharp so we need to make these edges beveled the easy way to do it is to click on the object click on tab to go into edit mode for a cube if everything is selected you are good just hit ctrl b and drag it then roll your mouse to add segments you can see that the segments are being added then click you notice that the edges are now beveled that's the quick way to do it what you should probably do is click on each edge one by one and work on that separately the different edges one by one but we don't need to do that here since this is a very quick tutorial we can just hit a ctrl b drag it and boom we have our bevel now it looks a lot smoother right click and hit shade smooth to make it even smoother yeah perfect for this to right click shade smooth and for the background to just make everything shaded smooth now great we have our beautiful looking cubes now let's add some materials to them let's make this one white go to our material property here hit new and let's make it something something like white and gray something around here and for this guy let's make it blue so new material color make it bluish try to make it this type of blue that shade of blue not cyan not turquoise yeah something like this good i think this is good and now for the background click on the background plane click on material new and make it slightly blue too 
let's just make it blue but a brighter blue slightly brighter blue just slightly brighter yeah yeah slightly brighter now okay now we have our shirt looking very close to the final shot now we can focus on animation this is a simple animation we are just trying to make the boxes bounce that's what we are trying to do you can see the motion here just the bouncy motion to be able to do that to be able to make the bottles follow the boxes as they move we are going to parent them so click on this bottle and click on its corresponding box and hit Ctrl P. Before you do that, make sure the box is selected with yellow and the bottle is selected with orange. Make sure that you are clicking the box last because the yellow highlight will be the parent and the orange highlight will be the child. So Ctrl P. Click on object to parent it. Now, if we move just this box, it moves the bottle too. Let's do the same thing here. Click on the bottle, Shift click on the box and Ctrl P, objects, good. Now they are parented. So let's just animate these boxes really quick. To animate, let's use our timeline. This is our timeline. Let's set it to frame one. So on frame one, we would add a keyframe. So let's add a keyframe here. To do that, just, you can do that many ways. You can add a keyframe in many ways. You can use the automatic keyframe um, auto key in here. You can add it from here, but how I like doing it really fast is just hitting I have your object selected hit i then location then you see a keyframe here for just the location and um, let's say we want this animation to last for 20 frames hit i and location now the reason why you, you see this yellow highlight here is because we didn't move the object at all so let's do that for this too well i think we should start from 10 hit i location and um, 25 or 30 i location so what we will do now is on the first keyframe we'll bring the box down and make sure you are selecting just this one keyframe don't select everything just this first one then hit i location then you would see it's animated now when we scroll through it, it goes up let's do it for the second one the first keyframe click on the first keyframe make sure make sure you are clicking just this one then move it down till it's out of frame just drag it down yeah then hit i location to update the keyframe now let's play it back to see what we have now okay good now this is the thing that most beginner animators do people that try to animate product i've seen this a lot the animation look basically like this this is different from what we are trying to achieve. You see, there is a bouncy motion here, but this is just dragging. It's because of the interpolation. So interpolation is basically how fast or slow your animation is going. We want to try to adjust the animation and fine tune it to our taste. So this is the part that most beginners just keep, and this is where we need to focus our attention right now. So to do that, let's go to our graph editor. Graph editor is where all the magic happens, man. Okay, now to, to go to our graph editor, I clicked here, this drop down menu to edit our workspace, then click graph editor. Make sure you're on the graph editor. We basically changed our timeline to graph editor. Now we have three different axes here, but since we did animate this axis, we can just disable them here. So disable the X and the Y, so we can see just the Z axis. Now, sometimes when you go to your graph editor, you don't see your graph anywhere and that can really mess with your mind. The easy way to fix is to just hit A, then hit full stop on your numpad to basically find whatever you're looking for. You can do that anywhere in your workspace. If you are looking for something, you can just click on it and hit full stop. Yeah, make sure X and Y location is disabled. We are working with just the Z location. Now, this is the part that confuses people, but it's really easy to understand. What you need to understand about these graphs, your F curves, is basically for a fast moving animation, it's more vertical. For a slow moving animation, it's more horizontal. So on your graph editor, if you see something that goes like this, that means it's happening quickly. Or if you see something that goes like this, it's happening slowly. So let me explain that. Like you can see on this graph, it's going this way, then this way. 
from here to here is a slow movement it's gradually climbing up but from here to here it goes really fast to the top then it slows down okay good but what we want is for it to bounce and basically that bounce is basically an overshoot from the animation we saw we want the box to go a bit above the landing point then settle so to do that at this point somewhere around here we don't want this graph to look like this at this point we want it to go above we want to drag this point higher than the landing point so it goes like this higher than land you can see now it's just doing this just normally we want it to go higher than land to do that we add a new keyframe here to add a new keyframe make sure this is selected if you just hit shift d on this keyframe you can just duplicate it and drag it out so let's drag it somewhere here somewhere let's say at 15 let's see how it looks let's play it back okay good we are getting there but it's coming down a lot faster than you want remember you want the very cool smooth animation so let's bring this guy down a bit okay we can see that it's coming from the bottom really slowly like it's dragging what that means is that this part is taking too long so let's just shift these guys backwards gx to move it backwards a bit yeah so it will shoot up faster now wonderful that's all this is exactly what we are looking for because we shifted these guys backwards this rising up took shorter time if we shift it to this side it's going to take a long time to rise as you can see so we basically have our animation for this first box bouncing animation now let's just repeat that for the second box so click on the second box we can see that we have the same thing happening here click a and full stop so we can fill up the view with the keyframes now what we want to do is to do exactly the same thing somewhere around here we want to add a new keyframe let's say at um at 20 we want to add a new keyframe so just hit on this last keyframe shift d to duplicate to make a new keyframe then drag it here higher okay maybe not at 20 maybe at 24 drag it higher yeah so it overshoots it goes from constant moves up overshoots then comes down let's see how it looks okay the same problem we have this just took too much time to go up so let's drag this ending part to the left gx to move to the left let's see how it looks now okay great we basically have our animation done but something i'm noticing is this second one is the second box is taking too much time to come out yeah it's taking too much time i want them to come almost the same time so instead of starting this at frame 10 let's select everything and shift it to the left don't just drag it because you might drag it out of its axis so that's why i'm using gx to move it in just the x-axis so gx and move it till our first keyframe starts from five let's see how that looks great perfect perfecto this is nice this is exactly what we are trying to achieve so i think we have our animation down congratulations you just made this beautiful product review nice one now we have done our animation added our keyframes we have messed with our curves which you should always do to fine tune your animation now let's work on lighting i think lighting will be the last thing we do so let's go back to our timeline and drag this whole thing down so you can see a lot more now we have added our basic light our hdr light the reason why i use hdr is because it has a realistic feel and it just fills everywhere up before i start to make my specific lighting so to add light is pretty easy shift a and go to light area to add a new area light it's very tiny so let's scale it up s to scale and drag now let's raise this light above wonderful now this is the light that is just going to fill up the whole space i just like adding this light to the top of our product sometimes the cap will just be in shadows it will be really dark we don't want that so that's why we are putting this light above now go into this pro object properties our light properties and change the power to something like 1000 so we can see this effect nice you can see it's now brighter 
but this is just too bright so let's let's try 600 okay you can see that the effect is changing at the top of our products we are basically filling the entire space with light so it's less boring oh one more thing one more thing when you are working in a collection like this short one collection make sure your collection is selected because if it's not selected when you're adding new objects it just falls by the wayside i don't know why that should be fixed blender so make sure it's selected so everything you add just goes in now we have added everything outside so we have to select them all and drag them into short one now good and make sure this is selected so everything you add all the lights you're adding are going inside there okay now we have this light what we need to do is just to duplicate it um let's go to our front view hitting one just duplicate this light shift d then drag it here why i like working with lighting orthographic views because when you hit rotate you don't need to hit any axis it just rotates in that particular axis that you are looking from so let's just rotate it like this r and rotate it so it's facing here something like this now we don't want it to be by the side we want it to be something like 45 degrees in front just blast light coming this way so to do that hit 7 to go to your top view move it somewhere here then r to rotate it good so this is what we want maybe it's too close so this is what we want we want it to be shooting the products from the front now let's duplicate that light again make sure you're in the top view shift d drop it here r and target this side now the lights shouldn't have the same values if you are going for proper key lights and fuel lights the fuel light shouldn't be as bright as the key lights so let's hit on the key lights let's make this our key light set it to probably 800 then this guy shouldn't be so bright so let's do like 400 okay let's add two backlights since we have different products here this is just very very simple basic lighting you can go all the way with this and make it really crazy but just know what you are doing because lighting is very very tricky so let's take this light shift d to duplicate put it behind the product r to rotate and point it towards the product i think we are behind we are behind our we are behind our plane let's drag it front drag it forward a bit yeah if i make it really close to the product and make it smaller then click to drop then go to our top view and duplicate this backlight so it's hitting the second product shift d drag it here and rotate just the same thing we just did so it's hitting this product from the back you can see the effect it's basically drawing a highlight around it has this nice effect it gives you can see the difference boring interesting so but this backlight shouldn't be so bright let's change that reduce it to uh, i shouldn't be 800 it should be like 400 yeah change the second one to 400 okay yeah i think we have our lighting set is there any other thing nope to take away all these jargons in your render view just click on this button so you make it very very clean so you can see what we are working on okay this is nice this is nice yeah finally i like to add this light it's called a point light at the back of the product it gives this glowing vibe so shift a lights points now i want the point light to be behind the product just directly behind the product yeah somewhere here now let's change the power to um, let's say 400 okay good but let's reduce it to 300 okay i think this is now you can see the difference boring interesting it just gives that glue behind a pop behind the product it just looks nice most of the time perfect wonderful great we have our animation very nice if you are following this and have gotten to this point you are awesome you're really really good okay now that we have all our lighting done let's make some final adjustments to the texture yeah for example we want the let's go to render view just hit z and render we want this guy to be a little bit reflective it's, it just looks very bland and dry now let's go to the material decrease the roughness the rougher it is the less reflective it is 
if you bring the roughness all the way down to zero it's going to basically look like a mirror you can see it from here this just looks like a mirror so bring it up to about 0 0.4 yeah this is somewhat like what the material should actually look like the same thing for this guy roughness should be 0 0.4 and the specular should come down a bit yeah same thing for this guy it looks like a proper lotion material now okay good yeah we could work in the rendered view on this side all day because we are working in ev it's real time so you can just do that it won't lag but cycles <laughs> cycles will lag so let's just mess with our render settings so we have exactly what we are going for so click on this render properties here make sure ambient occlusion is checked make sure motion blur is checked and screen space reflection so i think we are good now to render click on our output property click on this folder to set the name of our output find the folder you want to export to and rename it to uh, let's say first underscore shot first shot so now the professional way to do it is to export in png you're exporting in png sequences so you can join them together in your editing program that's how i work you export it to a folder different images that you can join together while editing but if you want to see your export really quickly you can just change it to either avi or ffmpeg let's pick this one one of the movie options so you don't need to make any other settings just click it and whew, that was really a lot let's click ctrl 12 to render we can just go here click render click render animation boom oh <laughs> escape before we render if we had let it render it would have rendered this whole 250 frames we do not want that so change the end frame rate from 50 to 30 this is the end of the animation yeah 30 or let's just give it some more frames to render like two frames so 32 so yeah, you can see it rendered just this part, just 32 frames. So control F12 to render the animation. So since we are using EV, this is going to take no time at all to render this whole animation. It'll just take a couple of minutes. So if you are still here, thanks for being part of this tutorial. Um, it wasn't easy to make. I think this is the third time I'm recording this. Thanks for supporting me. Please leave a like if you like this tutorial, if you want to see more subscribe to the channel and drop a comment tell me how it was tell me if you enjoyed the whole thing tell me if you want me to talk faster talk slower explain something more skip some basic stuff just tell me what you want in the comments aha our animation has rendered wonderful let's go into the folder you see our animation has rendered as mkv so double click it boom beautiful beautiful this is the simplest out of all the shots we are going to be working on and the next one we are going to be working on is this shot. So that's it for this video. In the next video in the series, we are going to work on the second shot. So join me there. Just grab a drink, grab a cup of coffee, grab a snack, and let's continue learning. Let's go on this journey together. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Click next, 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 next. See you guys in a bit. Stay awesome. Peace. Peace.